In his lifetime, he was a friend to many, but unknown to most. Half a world away, Benny was becoming TV's hottest property at the ripe old age of 55, as his shows became cult viewing across America. I've often called it adult animation. It was a slapstick humor. It was an international humor that uh, we all understand what Benny's doing and, and, and where he's coming from. Good evening. Here's the news flash. <laughs> I don't know of a live light entertainment comedy show, whether it's from here or the UK or anywhere, that has had the success that that show has had. They made an enormous fuss of him, and it gradually dawned on him. I mean, it seems strange that it should take so long to have any doubts at all. Uh, but then he gradually realized that he was successful. And I think this gave him um, a more comfortable confidence in himself. By 1989, the Benny Hill Show could be seen in over 140 countries. More people had laughed with him than his comic hero, Charlie Chaplin. You're watching Benny Hill, part of TV Funny Men Week on Biography. By the time they reach 40, something like 40% will already... It's right here on A&E. In 1989, The Benny Hill Show was a worldwide phenomenon. His employer of over 20 years, Thames Television, called him the world's most successful comedian and a genius as they pocketed the millions from sales to over 140 countries. On the 1st of May, they broadcast his latest show. Three weeks later, they fired him. 10 o'clock one morning, went into the outer office and, and John came out and said, oh, do you mind if, Dan, if I have a word with Ben? I said, no, not at all. They went in and about a minute later, John came out and, so, and I went in and Ben was sitting in the corner, ashen. And I just said, hey, how are you? It's fine. And John was sort of making small talk and Ben said, you can tell him, you know, he's a big grown-up lad. And he said, I said, what's the problem? And he said, I don't want to do any more Benny Hills. And that was it. Ben was... I mean, he was murdered. It was, he, they'd taken away his child. It's like losing your own child. That's how much the show meant to him. He was heartbroken, and I, it absolutely destroyed him. They just said that he was the jewel in their crown, and then they just sacked him like a schoolboy. Quite, quite disgraceful. After nearly 40 years at the top, there was suddenly nothing. An unemployed superstar, Benny returned alone to the apartment he had rented to be near his beloved studios. The devastation was, was so unbelievable, I don't think even crying could actually get the frustration and the upset out from his whole system. I, I think it, partly, I think it totally it destroyed part of him. I'm sure it did. With no show to write or to diet for, Benny's weight ballooned. Age was catching up with him. Then, Don Taffner threw him a lifeline. I came over, I couldn't imagine, because he was so successful worldwide. Uh, and that's what, I, I, I hope I can say this, I was so pissed off that I said, okay, well, let's do our own show. We don't need him. It was a B-12 shot. It, it helped him come around. And besides making a few dollars on it, 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 it was good for him and every and everyone around it that here's a guy that was so successful and somebody did a horrible thing to him and we're helping him come back to life, so to speak. Though shot on location in New York, Benny returned to Thames Studios to record his sketches with his trusted cast and crew. It was going to be the first of a whole new series, but it became a one-time special. By the time another British broadcaster started negotiations for a new series, Benny had been eating and drinking unchecked for two years, and his health had suffered. Following a heart attack, he was hospitalized with breathing complications. He booked under the name of Mr. Martini. And I said, why do you call yourself Mr. Martini? He said, well, any time, any place, anywhere. <laughs> Which made me laugh. Um, he didn't want me to go and see him in hospital. He didn't want anyone to see him. He wanted to keep himself to himself, but he was very ill and didn't tell anyone how ill he really was. 
Hello, Joel. Leaving the hospital, Benny wanted to finalize his forthcoming shows. He also was determined to see Louise English, now starring in a West End play. The theater's very hot. It's full. You might find it a little bit too much for you. No, no, I want to be there. I want to be there. And I want you to arrange a photographer to take a photograph of us together, which is something he'd never, ever done. I thought that was very odd. And it was a very, very happy day, and he came to see the matinee. And I remember his face looking up at me, and he had little tears. And, uh, and then he came to the dressing room afterwards, and he stayed, and he stayed, and he wouldn't go. He just wouldn't leave. And he kept sort of mentioning lovely things to me, and uh, very sensitive things, and it was almost like he knew. Benny went home to his Thameside apartment, but when he didn't answer the phone for three days and his neighbors heard his television constantly on, his friend Dennis Kirkland climbed a ladder to gain entrance to Benny's third floor apartment. And then I got to the top like so, and, and I could see him sitting there with his lovely hair all stuck up like that and the TV on, and it was quite evident he was, he was dead. And um, I crawled onto the balcony and I could see him through the window and um, he just looks oh, so sad and his it, it, beautiful hair stuck up and the guy opened the window, their, their kitchen window there next to Ben's balcony and he said, would you like a drink? And I said, just give me the bottle. You know? and then the police arrived and um, they broke the door in and then they let me in through the kitchen window and, and I won't tell you uh, what it's like when you discover a body that's been there for a couple of days, but they wouldn't let me touch anything. And I said, please, you've got to let me straighten his hair. And they said, okay. So, and his lovely hair was stuck up, so I just, I smoothed it all down for him, and he was okay. He was okay, and that was it. Benny was 68. On the table beside his body, amongst many papers, was the contract for his new series, just waiting for his signature. He was quite prepared in the last seven or eight years of his life, you know, to go at any time. He felt he'd, he'd fulfilled every ambition. He'd become a big star in America. He was known all over the world. What, what more was it to do, you know? Benny was buried next to his parents in his hometown of Southampton. He died a comedic legend like his hero, Charlie Chaplin. He somehow managed to hit a common thread of humor in people, this universal funny bone, which very few people have ever been able to do. He entertains people, and he will always entertain people. That what he has left is just pure laughter for everyone. Just one sign of how popular Benny Hill was when he passed away, the state-run television in China interrupted its programming to make the announcement. Now, Hill is still making people laugh around the world in syndication and through popular video compilations of his work. They are distributed, of course, by Thames Television, the same company that once fired him. A move a company spokesman later described as one of the worst mistakes we ever made.